And it's really heartening to see, particularly in UK, many symbols of racism of the past are being pulled down. But still in India, many, many symbols of racism, religious bigotry of the worst kind still lives on. There are entire towns named after the worst kind of religious tyrants. Aurangzeb. Look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the... Who in his lifetime imposing taxes on people who belong to a religion which is not theirs. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Top of his head. <laughs> Salam everyone, in this video I'm discussing how Hinduism is a bit racist. So let's check it out. Now in Mahabharata it says something very interesting. It says, the complexion of the Brahmas obtained was white. That which <laughs> the Khatriyas obtained was red. That which Vaishyas got was yellow and that which was given to Shudras was black. You remember this in Mahabharata 12, 188. So here it clearly says that uh, when it's the Shudras who are considered the lower, the low, lowest caste of people are basically black people. <laughs> so anyone who is in Africa he is basically considered in Hinduism to be the lowest, uh, you know, the lowest caste of people. <laughs> and I find this really hilarious because you will see a lot of like this Hindu scholar go into this very direct anti-black racist statements because of Hinduism, <laughs> because they con they think that Shudras, all Shudras are black people, basically. Whether they're born in Africa or born in India, it doesn't matter. As long as you're black, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, you're a, you're a Shudra. <laughs> Swami Prabhupada, he says the following about Shudras. Shudras is to be controlled only. They are never given to be f uh, freedom or free. Just like in America, the blacks were slaves, they were under control. And since you have given them equal rights, they are disturbing, most disturbing, always creating a fearful situation, uncultured and drunkards. What training they have got? They have got equal right, right? That is best to keep them under control as slaves, but give them sufficient food, sufficient clothes, not more than that. Then they will be satisfied. You can read about this in Room Conversion, Conversation, Varn Sama. System uh, must be introduced uh, fe February 14, 1977. So basically, this is from uh, the archive of uh, Shami Prabhupada, and I'll give you guys the link, you can go check it out. Then, he, in a, another place, he says the following Shudras or black people have no brain. <laughs> so, if you're a Shudra, you, you, you don't have a brain. I don't know how that works. I mean, like, people cannot live without a brain, but you know, Shudras, according to Shami Prabhupada, or this Hindu scholar, have no brain. I'm basically he's saying they're not, they're stupid. He said, in America also, the whole of America once belonged to the Red Indians. Why they could not improve? The land was there. Why did these foreigners, the Europeans, came and improved it? So Shudras cannot do this. <laughs> they cannot make any improvements. So <laughs> I love how this, how his logic works. By the way, I, I, I don't know if you guys noticed this. So this this guy Shami Prabhupada, he was not only racist. He was he was basically kind of a bit a bit fascist, right? He I think he believes that you know uh, the Brahmins or the Indo Aryans are the superior people. They must be both class. You know to manage things very nicely. You cannot make class exercise. Uh, both classes. The most intelligent class, Brahmana, and then next intelligent the Chatriyas, and the next intelligent the Vaishyas, and the last one who has no intelligence, Shudra. This four classes must be there. Uh, without this division of classes, uh, society will guide them. Hmm. At the present moment, without any class, uh, the government has made adult hold. Anyone who is above certain age, say 18 years or 20 years, he can hold. But there is no class. So this class can hold, and this class cannot hold. There is no such thing. Anyone who is above, above 18 years old, he is uh, competent to cast his vote and uh, people are not educated in this uh, division Brahman, Chaturya, Vaishya, Shudra they are all classless classless means fools, rascals, Shudra uh, 
If you classify, classify means there is interim class, there is next class, there is next. If you don't classify, then means sudra. Uh, so sudras they are not both. Similarly, uh, what they will elect? Uh, they will elect another rascal. That's all. Uh, big rascal. Uh, small rascal and big rascal. That's all. Therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita, says, "Sabir bara ha uska kahi samstri to puri sabko." Here is our president. Here is our prime minister. But what is he? He is elected by the sudras, so he is a big sudra. That's all. I'll come next week. Nice thing. Bara ha uska kahi samstri to puri sabko. The next line I just forget. Uh, anyone, if he is not Krishna conscious, he is a poshu. Anyway, uh, because human life is meant for that purpose. Tapo uh, dipanga putra kaji na sudhe sattha. Otherwise, he is animal. So this is going on at the present moment. Uh, some small animal accepting one big animal as a leader. Now, to be fair to him, he does think that uh, when it comes to the caste system, you can actually change your caste system. But even though, even if we say for the sake of argument that's true, that doesn't make it any better because I already talked about this. Even if these Brahmas can decide that some people can be initiated into their order or into their caste, then that decision is still made by Brahma. Okay, so if someone wants to be a Brahman, it has to be decided by Brahmas. So at the end of the day, it is still Brahmas that are deciding it. So it doesn't change anything. It's still it's still discriminatory, and it's still unfair, right? But of course, there's no evidence for this, as I showed you guys. Uh, the caste system is based on birth. Okay, this is what their scriptures uh, say. There's absolutely no evidence that suggests that it's based on some kind of merit. And the only evidence, the strongest ones, are the ones that show that uh, the caste system is based on birth. Because, I mean, it's literally in the Vedas. This is how the people were supposedly created. Now that we ha have all that cleared, let's see what uh, Hinduism actually says about these lower caste people. And, and see if uh, you know, any kind of discrimination exists or not. So first things you have to understand is that in this caste system or in Hinduism, you cannot speak to a lower caste person. That's right. I'm going to repeat that again. In Hinduism, you cannot talk to a lower caste person. For example, if you read uh, Apstamba Dharma Shastra, part 2, uh, 1, 2, 6 to 8, it says the following. As it is sinful to touch a kandala, so it is also sinful to speak to them or look at them. The penance for these offenses will be declared. By the way, this is another thing uh, I think some Hindu apologists will try to bring up, which is that uh, they often say that, oh, oh the reason uh, kind of like these people are born into this lower caste uh, system is because they have committed some crime in the past. So what are the, what kind of crimes are they talking about? So here it says that uh, a person who has stolen the gold of a Brahman so basically, they are going to be born again. If you, if a Brahman basically steals the gold of another Brahman, they are going to be born again as a Kandala or a lower caste person. And you're not allowed to talk to these people <laughs> because they stole some gold from these rich guys in the, in the past life, right? This is why these lower caste people have to be treated horribly. But the thing is that people change because the thing is that if someone steals someone's gold or kills someone, it's very much possible that that person may, may make penance, right? He may apologize for his mistake and he may try to redeem himself uh, from the crime that he committed. But under this Hinduism or under the Hindu system or the system of Varna, this option is not given to them. Even if this person regrets what he did and tries to make up for it, he doesn't have an option. And, and this is completely unjust. And I don't believe that if God God is real, he would uh, create an unjust system like that. Because how can you punish someone who is ready and willing to change himself and you don't give him the option? Here they're just, you know, they commit this crime and they're, they're for their whole life, they have to be insulted, they have to be discriminated against. I mean, even uh, criminals are not treated like this. Uh, even slaves are not treated like this. But this is exactly what Hinduism is teaching. But then again, there's no evidence for this anyway. I mean, like, for, for, if you, the only way you can justify this is if you're already a Hindu. But if you're not a Hindu, this makes no sense because there's no evidence that this, uh, you know, reincarnation thing is actually even real. So there's no evidence for this. And there's no evidence that this person also uh, committed some kind of crime. So I have no reason to think that you treating uh, these lower caste people like this is justified. In Usna Shamita, it says, by getting on the shadow of a low caste person, one should drink clarified butter uh, after bathing by looking at the sun in an impure state. One should recite mantram agindra. So basically, 
including about this in Usna Samita 989. So basically here it's saying that, you know, uh, <laughs> you cannot touch the shadow of a higher caste. Now, if you guys remember, remember the story I just told you guys were in Uttar Pradesh where this woman or this girl was beaten because her shadow fell on this uh, other person, this higher caste person. So, <laughs> I mean, can you imagine how awful this is? Like, they don't even allow your shadow to touch the shadow of these higher caste people. Again, this doesn't make any sense. Like, if this is really the case, that these people are being punished, then what kind of punishment is this? Uh, why is it that <laughs> criminals are not allowed to have their even their shadow touch the shadow of some other people? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, you don't treat criminal criminals like this. This is awful. <laughs> like, even if it's like some kind of like really horrible criminal, it's still not justified that you treat them like this. Then it says that you can become smarter if you wash the feet of Brahmins. So this is in Bengali, but I'm going to translate. It says, basically it says the following. The one who washes the feet of a Brahmin or give water so they can wash their ass <laughs> and other sexual organ. Uh, basically the word used here is, uh, basically it translates to like their sexual organ. He will be smarter or holier. We read about this in Uno Bing Shuti uh, Shanghita, the page number is 303. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, let's say that you're in jail, right? As a punishment, you basically have to wash their feet. Why? <laughs> like, this doesn't make any sense. Clearly, you can see this is like man-made nonsense. They basically made the system to benefit the Brahmins. This has nothing to do with, like, them committing crime in some past life or whatever. You cannot be nice to Shudras if you are a Brahman, but you have to be nice to Brahmans if you are a Shudra. It says the following, if a Shudra created for service does not serve Brahmans, nor does he give the means of sustenance to them, Hanuman becomes angry with him. Uh, you can read about this in uh, Skanda Purana 3 to 40, uh, the verse number is 56, and it says, if any foolish one of impious soul resorts to sin and heresy, abandons his own Brahman, kinsman, and honors kinsmen of other caste, his merit previously acquired becomes reduced to ash and not otherwise. He might have made monetary gifts in greater or smaller quantities as ordained by Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva formerly. Yet the Devas will not accept his uh, Havya, nor the ancestor, his Kavya. So if you're a Shudra, you have to be nice to these Brahmans, right? And if you're a Brahman, then you cannot be nice to Shudras. <laughs> because if you do, uh, again, like gods will be uh, upset with you, according to Hinduism. So if you're a Shudra, uh, your Brahmans can only treat you badly. And this is why <laughs> all these stories now starts to make sense, because this is literally what Hinduism is teaching. Then it says, <clears throat> a Shudra cannot be rich. A Shudra could never amass wealth, lest by uh, his wealth, he makes the members of the three upper class obedient to him. By this, he would incur sin. With the king's permission, however, a shudra for performing religious acts may earn wealth. You can read about this in Mahabharata, section uh, X, uh, page 131. A shudra cannot even be rich. So you, you don't even have the right to make money. You, have, you don't have the right to make money. More money than uh, than the Brahmans, uh, the Khotriyas, right? You'll always have to earn less money than them. Then in Manusmriti it says, A Brahman may confidently seize the goods of his Shudra or slave, for as that slave can have no property, his master may take his possessions. You can read about this in Manusmriti 8, 417. So basically, if you're a Shudra, a Brahman can just take your money. Whatever money you make, a Brahman can always come here and take all your money simply because you're born into a family. Anyway, then it says in Manushmati 10.139, No collection of wealth must be made by a Shudra, even though he be able to do it. For a Shudra who has acquired wealth gives pain to Brahmanas. Oh, you know, in Manushmati 10.129, it's saying that, you know, if, you earn, if you're a Shudra and if you're earning money or if you're like rich, then that's going to upset those poor Brahmans, those rich, poor Brahmans. They're going to be so upset by that. <laughs> They're going to be upset. Because, you know, uh, these poor people are making money. That, that's so upsetting, you know. <laughs> I don't make this stuff up. You can't make, make, make poor people earn, earn money. Okay, poor people have to stay poor. <laughs> that's what he knows they're teaching. 
<laughs> it's teaching that poor people should not, should not make money. They should stay poor. Uh, subhanallah. Uh, this, this religion, man. This is the end of this video. Inshallah, in the next video, I'll discuss how Hinduism teaches that lower class people have the same right as animals and how Brahmins don't have to treat them differently than an animal. If you guys like the video, then don't forget to like share, subscribe and click bell icon for more. If you want to support then please consider supporting me on Patreon or become a YouTube member. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time inshallah.